the Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> of Johnson's Wax Products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. I have some bright news for you tonight. It's about Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Of course, you're familiar with glow coat. Who isn't? It's far and away the most popular of all floor polishes. But did you know this? Today, Glow Coat is brighter than ever. In fact, it now gives your kitchen linoleum and other floors nearly twice as much shine as ever before. Believe me, this bright, beautiful gloss is really something to see. Of course, Johnson's Glow Coat still shines as it dries. There's no rubbing or buffing. To get this wonderful new shine, you simply apply and let dry. That's all there is to it. Your floors still get the same wonderful glow coat protection. Spill things wipe up in no time from the smooth waxed surface. In fact, keeping a glow coated floor sparkling clean is no bother at all. Try it, won't you? Brighter than ever, Johnson's self polishing glow coat. There's nothing else like it to bring out the beauty of the home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. Now that Indian summer is here, big medicine is being made in TP number 79 on the Wistful Vista Reservation. Meet Big Chief Eager Beaver and his squaw, Princess Go Along with Gag, better known to the pale face world as Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> on that telephone all morning. What on earth are you doing? I'm just closing a deal, kiddo. This is the time of year I always... Hello, operator. How about my call to the Timothy Hayes farm out on route number two? Oh, is that you, Mert? Oh, dear. How's every little thing, Mert? Is he? What's he, Mert? Your little brother. Oh, the poor little guy. Well, you keep him away from Halloween parties this year, Mert. Why? What happened to her little brother last year? He got a prize for wearing the funniest false face, and he wasn't even wearing one. <laughs> What's he, Mert? Well, give me a ring when it's clear. Well, thanks, Mert. <laughs> Look, dearie. Huh? Maybe I shouldn't be the... Uh, maybe I should be the kind of wife who stays out of her husband's business affairs and simply takes the limousines and diamond necklaces as they come, but I guess I'm just too snoopy. What's the big deal? Oh. Oh, it ain't too big, but every year about this time, I get a terrific yenta. Come in. Oh, it's the weatherman from next door, McGee. Hello, Mr. Williams. Hi, Foggy, old man. Good afternoon, in a way. Mm. Have a cigar, Foggy? Uh, no, thank you. I have a cigar. You got two? Thanks. <laughs> I'll smoke it after dinner. Won't you sit, uh, sit down, Mr. Williams? Uh, thank you, no. No, I just dropped into... Well, that is, I didn't exactly drop in. My visit is deliberate. Or should I say, premeditated? Yeah, yeah, say that. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Premeditated. What I mean to say is that while I don't wish to presume on the fact that I'm now your next door neighbor, or you are my next door neighbor. Or both. Or both, yes. I do not wish. Well, no one could ever. Well, I mean, uh, as I was. A... Where was I? You don't want to presume on the fact that we're next door neighbors. Take it from there. And don't be too cautious. As a neighbor, I presume plenty. Oh. Well, my wife is out of town, and I'm doing my own cooking, such as it is. Mm -hmm. And it isn't too bad, although I have had better. And a lot worse, for that matter. Mm -hmm. If you must know. <laughs> and I don't know why you should. <laughs> Do you? Do we what? Do you have an egg I could borrow? <laughs> I need an egg. Foggy shake hands. Certainly, but why? Well, I think he's congratulating you on making the first positive statement we've ever heard from you, Mr. Williams. <laughs> Certainly you may have an egg. McGee, dearie, look on the bottom shelf of the refrigerator. Uh, uh, excuse me. Never mind the egg. Come to think of it, I'm going to make some rice pudding. Or maybe a custard pudding. Or maybe a bread custard pudding. I wish I liked it. <laughs> Perhaps I'd better make some raisin cookies. 
uh, or an upside down cake, or just buy some ice cream. That's it, ice cream. I'll get it at Kramer's drugstore. I have to go downtown to dinner anyway, so I might as well get it. <laughs> Just a darn minute, Foggy. <laughs> if you got a date downtown for dinner, what are you cooking for? Isn't that strange? I, I never thought of that. <laughs> well, thank you anyway. I must go home and feed my groundhog. Good afternoon, probably. <laughs> The poor man will starve to death before he makes up his mind what to have for dinner. Old Foggy is going to be a good neighbor, though. What makes you think so? I peeked into his garage yesterday, and has he got the stuff? A 40-buck lawnmower, 150 fit of hose, power tools, everything. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, he was the first one to want to borrow something. Yes. He made the first crack. <laughs> so don't blame me. Excuse me. Hello? Who? Yeah, this is Mr. McGee. Mr. Hayes? Oh, hi, it's him, old man. Look, about those apples. Apples? You got a good crop this year? Best since 1939, eh? Great, Tim, great. Got them all picked? You have? Well, don't dispose of them. One of them now till you talk to me, Tim. Yeah. I'll be right out, Tim. Oh, by the way, how's the family? Oh, you're a bachelor. <laughs> okay, Tim. See you in about an hour. <laughs> well, it looks like a deal, Snooky. Mm-hmm. Am I old enough to be told now? I know about the birds and the bees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I could understand about the pears and the apples. <laughs> oh, didn't I tell you? Didn't he tell me, he says. Been dashing around here all day making notes and phone calls like General Motors retooling for waffle iron. <laughs> now he says, didn't he tell me? No, lover. You've been as close-mouthed as a discontented Russian. Well. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, baby. Well, a guy give me a tip on this year's apple crop, see? No. So, I says to myself, ha-ha, I says, so the apple crop was good this year. In that case, ha-ha, I says to myself. Come in. Hello there, kids. Great day, ain't it? Yeah, sure is, old-timer. In fact, I and my wife are taking a little drive out into the country. Would you care to ride along with it? No, thanks, daughter. Don't care for farm life myself. Tried it once. Give it up. Not enough fresh air. <laughs> Not enough fresh air on a farm? Not for me. I kept falling into the silo. <laughs> Had a lot of other trouble, too, Johnny. Uh, such as what, Mr. Oldtimer? Horse trouble. Had eight horses that I paid two dollars for, and you I... You paid two dollars for eight horses? Yep. Standard price. What kind of horses can you get for for a dollar? Quarter horses. <laughs> well, sir, one day I throws my side saddle on a horse and starts out to... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You rode side saddle? Had it, Johnny. Somebody had stolen one of my stirrups. <laughs> well, sir... No sooner did I get into the saddle than the horse rears up. Get down, you old goat, I says. And the horse says, what if I don't? The horse said that? Yep. Just then it come apart in the middle and two young fellers gets out. Huh? <laughs> Seems uh, uh, it was a vaudeville team hiding out from the sheriff. <laughs> Funny thing, too. The vet had looked at that horse's teeth just the day before and asked me who made the lower plate, but I never give it another thought. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting experience, old-timer. Very. Reminds me of the time I went buffalo hunting. Tell us, McGee, as if anybody could stop you. Love to hear about it, Johnny. Was well, your foot or a horseback? In a Buick. Hmm? I left Cleveland at 8.30 one night and hunted for buffalo till daylight. <laughs> Had an old map and kept getting off the road. <laughs> Still got an old map, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, but that ain't the way I hear it. <laughs> the way I hear it, one feller says, the other feller says, he says, see, you got one of them rear engine automobiles. Yep, says the other feller, but I didn't find it out till yesterday. I've been backing up for 12,000 miles. <laughs> so long, kid. So long. Billy Mills and the orchestra, feuding, a fighting, and a fussing.
people out here in the country, McGee? Yeah. I wonder why they don't build cities closer to all this. <laughs> That'd take all the fun out of driving into town on Saturday night. I always... Whoops! What's the matter? Why are you slowing down? Burma shave sign coming. <laughs> Never miss them. There's the first one. They say that the ancient Roman... Had his whiskers yanked out by a slave. But no one has ever told us... How the people in Burma shave. Ah, oh my, isn't that cute? Hmm. I wonder who writes all those poems. I know who wrote that one, and don't be surprised next week if he's working for Red Skelton. <laughs> ah, get a whiff of that fresh country air, baby. Hmm. Don't that air make you feel wonderful? Yes, I just love this season of the year. Mm -hmm. When all the billboards start turning red and gold. Yeah. <laughs> I always know winter ain't far away when Ringling Brothers' three sheets start curling at the edges. <laughs> on them ads for Dr. Pierce's golden medical discovery on the barns. Say, the speaking of golden medical discoveries, look who's walking along the road, McGee. Huh? Oh, well, I'll be a... Oh, dear. <sighs> Gotta get them brakes fixed. <laughs> Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc, where are you going? Well, hello there, pigeon face. Hello, Molly. Car break down, Doctor? No, I'm taking a day off, my dear. Thought I'd take a stroll through the countryside to see what's keeping the farmers so healthy. <laughs> there hasn't been a pair of calloused hands in my office since my nurse got stuck in the elevator and had to shinny up the cable. <laughs> well, climb in, vitamin boy. Always glad to take a slum kid like you out into the country and show them that the trees don't grow only in Brooklyn. <laughs> or some such. Yes, uh, do come along, Doctor. You'll get just as much fresh air and exercise riding in this car as you would walking. Oh, thanks. I believe I will. Now, you're lucky we come along, that's all. That is one man's opinion, Leadfoot. Hmm. Personally, I'd rather ride with a bubblegumming high school boy and a souped-up hot rod, but I'm too tired to be choosy. Where are you bound besides muscle? <laughs> himself here has a deal on with a farmer named Hayes. Doctor. Best apple crop in these parts since 1939, Doc. Go on out and look it over. Since when have you begun speculating in farm produce, McGee? Uh -huh. I never thought you knew the difference between hen fruit and eggplant. Oh. <laughs> he spent a lot of time on a farm when he was a lad, Doctor. Didn't you, dearie? You betcha. Tell him the idea you had to plant soybeans in circles and raise steering wheels for the Ford company. <laughs> yes, do. Sometime. Don't worry your fat little head about my agricultural experience, Tommy Thumper. <laughs> I invented an electric fence that all you had to do was press a button and it would shock all the corn. <laughs> and I had animated scarecrows that would throw rocks at chicken hawks. And I designed a clipping machine, too. You just drive the sheep in one end and they'd come out the other end wearing turtleneck sweaters and carrying from two to five wool blankets. <laughs> Depending on the size of the sheep, of course. And in 1931, 1932 it was. Hold it, McGee. Stop the car. Stop uh, the car. Uh, What's the yeah. matter? Nothing. We just passed Mr. Wilcox. Well, it seems to be a great day for familiar pedestrians. One of these days you'll be out driving and you won't see anybody you know. And the people you do talk to won't know any jokes. And there'll be a half hour open on Tuesday night. <laughs> When that day comes, pillbox... Oh, hi, Junior. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. I thought that was you we passed. Hello, Harlow. Hello, pal. Molly, hi, Doc. Where's everybody going? We're going out on Route 204 to the Hayes Farm, Mr. Wilcox. Got a little business to transact, Junior. Old Doc here was hiking along the pike like a homeless bum, so we picked him up, too. You want to lift, too? No, thanks. I enjoy walking. Uh -huh. You do? Well, imagine that. For 20 years, I've been advising people to walk more. So I tried it myself today... And so help me, if I ever prescribe it again, may somebody beat my brains out with a rubber heel. <laughs> you really like walking, Harlow? Love it, Doc, love it. Although I have a pretty tough time trying not to step on any leaves. Not to step on any leaves? Why, at this time of year, Mr. Wilcox, that's almost impossible. I know, but I try. I guess you don't know what leaves mean to me. I thought I'd heard everything from this guy, but this is a new approach. <laughs> Tell us, Junior, what do leaves mean to you? Tell us, Mr. Wilcox. I really want to know. Thank you, Molly. I'm glad your husband brought out the beauty of the home today. 
Well, really will, Carl. <laughs> well, maybe you don't know that Johnson's wax is made from the leaves of the carnauba tree, which is found mostly in Brazil. Yeah, but... If it weren't for those leaves, think of the households unprotected against dust and dirt and dampness with Johnson's wax. Yeah, but what that got to what you're talking about? I was... <laughs> <laughs> I was really going to say... I was merely going to say that the carnauba leaf has made me a good living, and I won't mention any other names. <clears throat> and then when you think that Johnson's Wax does so much to lighten the burden of housekeeping and emphasizes beauty and hospitality, and when you recall the hundreds of uses for Johnson's Wax in the home, such as on floors, furniture, woodwork, enameled surfaces, luggage, and so on, well, you can understand why I don't trample leaves underfoot. Personally, I think it's a very proper attitude. Look, uh... Waxy. Yes, well. Is this a new feeling you've got about leaves, or you always been a little nature happy? Oh, <laughs> October and November have been my favorite months ever since I was a kid. Always used to take long walks in the autumn. In fact, all through high school, I was known as Autumn Boy. Oh. <laughs> autumn Boy. Ain't that nauseating? <laughs> uh, was that the exact term, Harlow, autumn boy? No, the exact term was fall guy. <laughs> I, I think autumn boy is prettier. Yeah. Well, look, I don't want to delay you, folks. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Mr. Oh, boy, oh, boy. You know something, Dockey? It was just about this time of year that I had my first date with Molly. <laughs> yes, it was, Doctor. Yeah. I remember he brought me a big bouquet of red and gold autumn leaves. To yeah. press in the album? No, to build a fire in the stove. <laughs> That's a very novel approach. I suppose it was love at first sight. Matter of fact, Doc, it wasn't so much love with us at first as it was geometry. Geometry? Mm -hmm. I was a guy with a lot of angles, and she was a girl with a lot of curves. <laughs> so the minute I seen her, I said... Hold to... it, dearie. Here's the fire. Oh. Turn in here. Yeah, okay. Oh, McGee. Got to get them brakes fixed. Well, come on, Molly. Come on, Doc. I got to see this guy about those apples. Well, this is really a beautiful farm, isn't it? Hmm? Looks like one of those country places run by a city man to confuse the Internal Revenue Department. I'll bet in a good year this farm doesn't lose more than 50 or 60,000. I wonder where the owner is. Tim Hayes, his name is Tim Hayes. Hey, Tim! Tim, you here? No, but I am, folks. Well, heavenly days, Wallace Wimple. Hello, Wally. Hi, Wimp, old man. Hello, folks. If you want to see Mr. Hayes, he'll be here in a minute. He's my uncle. Oh, Tim's your uncle, eh? On whose side, Mr. Wimple? On my side, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> oh. When Sweetie Face and I have an argument, I often come out here and hide. Sweetie Face, that's my big old wife, Doctor. Oh, yes, I know, Wally. I, I treated her once for lacerated ankles. It seems somebody had carelessly put a bear trap in her shower bath. <laughs> oh, I, I wouldn't say carelessly, Doctor. I put quite a bit of thought into that. <laughs> This is a beautiful farm, Mr. Wimple. Yes, it really is, Mrs. McGee. I have a simply marvelous time out here with my bird book. With your what, Wimp? My bird book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just bought a new one, see? Our feathered friends of the North American continent. Oh. <laughs> I spend hour after hour in the fields and meadows here with my bird book. See many interesting birds around here, Wallace? Oh, I do indeed. Just this morning, I saw a deckle edged scarlet-crested waggle finch. Waffle which? Waggle finch, Mr. McGee. <laughs> the only North American bird that can fly backward, except a hummingbird. Flies backwards, huh? Yes. And jet propelled, too. <laughs> they fly around the front doors of drugstores after school hours and pick up soda straws. Uh -huh. Then they take a deep breath and blow through the straw. Some of them can blow themselves backwards at 32 miles an hour. <laughs> you can recognize them usually by crumpled tail feathers. <laughs> They're always backing into things. <laughs> Do you want to go in the house and wait for Uncle Tim? No, we'll wait right here, Mr. Wimple. My goodness, isn't the farm beautiful this time of year, McGee? Yes. The leaves all turning color. Shocks of corn stacked over there. Pumpkins all around. Yeah, and those four scarecrows leaning up against the fence. Huh? Oh, those scarecrows have been leaning there for years. Yeah? They were here when Uncle Tim bought the farm from the king. Oh, the king's scarecrows, eh? Well, it takes a lot of scarecrows to watch over all this corn.
certainly is a beautiful farm you have here, Mr. Hayes. Yeah, it sure is, Tim. How many hands do you have? Just two, Mr. McGee, but I have six fingers on one of them. <laughs> See, by the way, Doctor, I believe you're the Dr. Gamble who took care of my niece, Eulalia Prison Heat. Oh, yes, I remember the case very well, Mr. Hayes. As I recall, your niece got her apron caught in the windmill and was whirled around for three hours. Yes, sir, that's just what happened, Doctor. And I must say, you fixed her up real good. No after effects? No, except on windy days, she keeps turning cartwheels. <laughs> of course, if we catch her in time, we always strap an ice cream freezer onto her. Well, you said on the phone you wanted to talk over the apple crop, Mr. McGee. You betcha, Tim. I want to see it. They all been graded and sorted? Oh, yeah. We sent all the colts to the cider press. Mm -hmm. If uh, you come back in about a month, we'll give you some real nice hard cider. That is, if anybody can stand up long enough to hand it to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have some very handsome cattle over there, Mr. Hayes. What's that big black and white cow? That's a whole steam, Doctor. What's the little one right beside her? That's a half steam. <laughs> Now, if you folks will step this way through the barn here, uh, I'll take you to the storeroom where we got the apples all barreled. Very modern barn you have here, too, Tim. How do you keep it so clean? Well, for one thing, we don't allow no animals in here. Oh. They just kick the hay all over the place. <laughs> have any trouble keeping help around here, Mr. Hayes? Well, we lost a foreman last week. He fell in the hay baler. Oh, how terrible. Oh, I don't know, Miss McGee. It gave one of the other boys a chance for promotion. <laughs> I think that's very fair, Mr. Hayes. Nothing like a hay baler to give a man a square shake. <laughs> mm. Well, come on, Tim, about that little deal of ours. Let's get on with it. All right, Mr. McGee. I'll run the house later and set the cook's leg. Set the cook's leg? Well, why didn't you tell me? I'm the doctor. Well, it wasn't no call to, doctor. That was the cook's leg of lamb. She asked me to set it on a stove for her. <laughs> well, let's go in the storeroom, folks. Wow. Oh, heavenly days. Doesn't that smell good? Mm. And did you ever see such beautiful apples? Millions of them. Nice looking crop, Tim. What's the latest market quotation on apples? Well, now, I couldn't rightly say to that, Mr. McGee. Uh, how big an order was you consider? I'm glad you asked me that, Tim. Circumstances have kind of altered my circumstances since I talked to you on the phone. You see, we got a guest with us now, kind of unexpected, so... I'm going to need three apples instead of two. You want an apple, don't you, Doc? Oh! This is ridiculous. Bibber and Molly return in just a moment. If you're anything like me, you like to have your cake and eat it, too. For instance, you want your kitchen linoleum to have a really bright shine, but you don't want to do any unnecessary work. Well, what you're looking for is Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. It's so easy to have really bright floors with glow coat. There's no rubbing or buffing. Just apply and let dry. That's all. As for that glow coat shine, believe me, it really is bright. Why, the Johnson's glow coat now on your dealer's shelf gives nearly twice as much shine as before. Glow coat dries so smooth and even, too. The gleaming coat of wax never looks streaked. And Glow Coat's tough wax protection makes your housework so much easier. Dirt and spilled things wipe up from the shining surface quick as a flash, leaving your floors spotlessly clean again. Ask your dealer for brighter than ever Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat tomorrow. There's nothing else like it to bring out the beauty of the home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to join everybody in the entertainment world in congratulating Fanny Bryce on her birthday tomorrow and her four, uh, 43rd year in show business. And we hope she goes on for another 43 years. <laughs> oh, she can't do that. There ain't that many new jokes. <laughs> Dearie, uh, did you ever go to a formal party with people lined up behind that big glass bowl? Yes. Did you ever notice that the bowl held the same old stuff, but the punchline kept changing? I see what you mean. Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Goodbye. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.
This is WMAQ NBC in Chicago.